Thank you for joining me for five simple rules for finding 700% winners. Now that name comes from the fact that I presented these rules at the Total Wealth Symposium last year and we did have one of the stocks soar 700%. On average, the stocks gained over 200%. There were five that passed the screen and this is the screen. These are the exact rules and we need to focus on what's important when looking for winners and that doesn't include earnings. We want to look at small stocks. We want to look at stocks that are going up. We need to focus on sales and cash flow because those are factors that allow small companies to become big companies. Finally, we want to look at a valuation ratio. And in this case, it's enterprise value to earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization. That's a forward-looking metric based upon testing, whereas the others, more common ones like price to earnings ratio, look backwards and don't forecast future performance as well as they forecast past performance. Just in a little bit more depth, we're looking at small companies simply because of the fact that it's easier for a small company to double. And we want to see these fast-growing companies associated with fast-growing stocks. Now we want to buy stocks that are going up and the reason for that is stock prices change based upon the laws of supply and demand. When demand increases, the price increases. We want other investors buying because that's what makes a stock goes up. Now you don't have to be the first investor. This is a chart of Walmart and the stock gained 3700% after opening a thousand stores. So Walmart's already a retail giant by the time the big gain started. Now of course you could have gains in the stock before that time, but the safer gains come after the company is established with sales and cash flow. Another example of why you don't have to be first is Microsoft. Microsoft didn't invent operating systems, but it certainly made a fortune on it. So it's important to let the stock prove itself before jumping in. Continuing on with the rules, sales demonstrate demand for the product. There are plenty of good ideas out there that don't result in sales. Without sales, you can't get cash flow from operations. And cash flow from operations is what allows a company to grow. A management will need cash flow in order to reinvest in the company, acquire other companies, or reward investors with buybacks as the company grows. Now, if they don't have cash flow from operations, they're going to be forced to borrow money or sell more stock. These actions dilute shareholder value. So look for sales and cash flow from operations. Now when looking at metrics, Enterprise value includes the amount of a company's debt. That helps you see what a company sells for. The price of the stock is just one component of the enterprise value. We want to focus on the total value of a small company and that's enterprise value. Earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization reduces the impact of accounting charges. And remember, Accounting rules allow a company a lot of leeway to make decisions. They're not wrong, they're not fraudulent, but they cloud valuation. By focusing on this metric, we reduce that reliance on management assumptions and we get a better look at what the company's truly worth. Now, does it work? Well, to test the rules, I used a very simple exit. 50% trailing stop. 38.2% of the stocks that gave a buy signal delivered a gain. The average gain was 93.2%. Including all of the gains and losses, this system delivered an average annual gain of more than 23% a year over 10 years. And it's a low frequency system, which means it trades infrequently and is suitable for long-term investing. 
Now, these are the stocks that meet these rules right now. Each of these, however, is thinly traded. Some of them don't trade at all on some days, so it would be difficult to get in or out, and you would need to consider that in planning any buys or sells. There's widespread, so limit orders would be helpful. They carry higher than average risks, so if you do decide to research these stocks, remember to focus on the risks. Finding big winners means buying what other investors are buying. We need to learn to look past earnings when we're looking at a small company and focus on sales and cash flow. Earnings will come later, but without cash flow, a company is just not going to survive in the long run. And then we need to look past popular valuation metrics. Use the ones that work in testing. I hope you found this helpful, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Thank you.